you know, I like to criticize the corporate media, but my business partner, Jen, uh, sent me this link earlier and I was actually stunned. I was actually stunned that this clip, that this guy was allowed on MSNBC. I believe he was on yesterday morning. Uh, this was one of the only guests that I've heard actually utter some sanity on Syria. And again, it's now Friday at 4.50 p.m. I, I hope nothing happens tonight. I hope nothing happens tonight. I hope nothing happens tomorrow. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. As soon as I mentioned that there was a guest on MSNBC that ushered in some sanity, my, YouTube's, my YouTube started buffering again and freezing again. Hmm. Very interesting. It's almost like there's a human with a button from YouTube doing something based on what I'm talking about. Hmm. I digress. So I hope it's almost five o'clock. I hope nothing happens tonight. I hope nothing happens this weekend. I hope nothing happens, period. But let me play you a, a guest on, on Morning Joe that actually had something smart to say uh, in a sea of neocons and people that are endlessly hawking for war. Mining any chance, and the chances are slim to begin with, of progress in Syria. So, Jeffrey Sachs, uh, chime in. This is m very different than just a war between two countries. This is as convoluted as it gets and could get out of tr control. I don't think people m might really conceptualize, maybe even not this president, how out of control this could uh, escalate. It's true, but I think we have to step back and not put this uh, in partisan terms. This is a U.S. mistake that started seven years ago. And I remember the day on, uh, on your show mm -hmm. uh, when uh, President Obama said, Assad must go. Mm -hmm. And I looked at uh, you and Joe and I said, huh, how's he going to do that? Where's the policy for that? Right. And we know uh, they sent in the CIA to overthrow Assad, the CIA and Saudi Arabia together uh, in covert operations tried to overthrow Assad. It was a disaster. Eventually it brought in both ISIS as a splinter group to the jihadists that went in. It also brought in Russia. So we have been digging deeper and deeper and deeper. What we should do now is get out mm -hmm. and not continue to throw missiles, not have a confrontation with Russia. Seven years has been a disaster under Obama continuing under Trump. This is what I would call the permanent state. This is uh, the CIA. This is the uh, Pentagon wanting to keep Iran and Russia out of Syria, but no way to do that. And so we have made a proxy war in Syria. It's killed 500,000 people, displaced 10 million. And I'll say predictably so, because I predicted it seven years ago that there was no way to do this and that it would make a complete chaos so what I would plead to President Trump is get out, like his instinct told him, He's by said the way. That, before, yeah. that was his instinct. Right. But then all the establishment, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Pentagon, everybody said, no, no, that's irresponsible. But his instinct is right. Get out. We've done enough damage, seven years. And now we really risk a confrontation with Russia that is extraordinarily dangerous, mm. reckless. Admiral Savridis, President Trump has said. Whoa. Whoa. What? I mean. <laughs> who let that guy in the building? And you know, it's funny because I always say, like, help me get back in the field. Help me get back in the field so I can cover Flint and other things. I'll, I'll keep it real. I don't want to go to Syria. <laughs> There's like a certain threshold of risk I'm willing to take. I'm not particularly interested in going to Syria, but I'll happily cover it here. I'm just keeping it real. Uh, but I mean, that was so much sense spoken on a corporate national media network that I almost have to think like they mistakenly booked that guy, Jeffrey Sachs, or like he snuck into the building, he snuck on set. And you gotta give credit where credit is due. That was, I mean, he's right. And, and by the way, for a moment, let that sink in, what he said. 500,000. 500,000 to 600,000 
innocent people have been killed because the U.S., like we've done elsewhere, has tried to topple another leader in another country. We've played this record before. We've done it in Iran. We tried it in Cuba, Venezuela, Peru. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. The U.S. trying to spread democracy, spread democracy, tries to go in and take out, you know, Assad is a dangerous man. I'm not going to pretend he's not. And he has done some terrible things. But that's in another country. That's in another country. Yet we have orchestrated through, remember what he said, Barack Obama orchestrated this. Barack Obama orchestrated this. Started with Obama. We've been doing this now for several years. Hundreds of thousands killed. 10 million displaced. All over the Middle East, Syrians are displaced. And now we want to double down. They're talking about dropping bombs on government headquarters. They're talking about dropping bombs on airfields, on chemical weapons headquarters. By the way, you think you just drop bombs where chemical weapons are stored and it doesn't act, it doesn't cause a big problem for the wider population. I'm going to play you a little bit more of that because obviously since this guy made a good point, then MSNBC had to have somebody on a neocon to make a bad point. So here we go. President Trump has said going back now several months that we should get out of Syria. That was his advice to Barack Obama many years ago, get out of Syria. What are the consequences if you walk away right now from Syria without responding to a chemical attack from the regime there? Yeah, I think, I think there are two problems with uh, Professor Sachs's comments, although I, I certainly uh, feel that sense of Middle East fatigue that we all have. And, of course, it's not just Syria. It's Iraq. It's Afghanistan. There have been a, a whole series of things that have generated the kind of feeling that says, you know, let's just pull back, let's get out of the world, let's come back to the United States. I think there are two fundamental problems with that. One is the use of chemical weapons, I think, really does demand a response from the international community at a level of military strike. So I do support a strike here. Uh, and secondly, and, and I think Professor Sachs is correct to say this is a massive humanitarian disaster. I think the numbers are actually 600,000 dead and 14 million displaced. So. Mm. Uh, I'm in complete agreement with him on the scale of this, but I, I would like to see the United States try and be part of the solution. And here, what I would do is look back to the Balkans in the 1990s, which looked somewhat like Syria of today. And there was eventually an international solution, and it included the U.S. and Russia working together. We got a long way to go to get there. But if we just step away from it, as attractive as that feels to us, I don't think it's the right decision, either for the country or for the international community. I don't think it's attractive, but I think we have to understand how this happened. This happened because of us. These 600,000 are not just uh, incidental. We started a war to overthrow a regime. It was covert. It was timber sycamore. People can look it up, the CIA operation together with Saudi Arabia, still it's shrouded in secrecy, which is part of the problem in our country. A major war effort shrouded in secrecy, never debated by Congress, never explained to the American people, signed by President Obama, never explained. And this created chaos. And so just throwing more missiles in right now is not a response. My only concern... We need to go... It's, by the way, not to walk away, to go to the U.N. Security Council as the admiral says, to agree with Russia on a strategy for ending the fight. But ending the fight means that we stop trying to overthrow a government, that we stop trying to support rebels who are committed to overthrowing the government. That is where this war continues, because we to this day back rebels that are trying to overthrow a government contrary to international law, contrary to the UN Charter, Contrary to common sense, contrary to practical path, we can't do it. And it's just creating ongoing crisis to the extent of facing an imminent confrontation with Russia. So I, I think this is a... What uh, is this? I mean, I'm, more, I'm, I'm convinced. 
he snuck into the building. He snuck into the building. There's no other explanation for why MSNBC allowed this man, why MSNBC allowed this man on their, on their air, right? <laughs> but he's right. Not only did, is the United States in large part responsible for those 600,000 dead, uh, I don't know the exact number, but 14 million displaced, one of the guest sets. But what we've been doing, now we're talking about doubling down. Doubling down on that. It's, it's madness. It's complete madness. Complete madness. We need to get the hell out of Syria. We need to stop trying to uh, you know, topple democratically elected leaders, and we need to start uh, focusing on toppling our democratically corrupt leaders here in the United States. That's what we need to be doing. Trump is probably going to be dropping missiles on several different uh, locations in Syria, and there's no reason for it other than to be blusterous and exude power and satisfy the neocons and distract the public probably from, you know, the, the, the Mueller investigation. But this isn't only dangerous for the Syrian people, it's dangerous for the United States because this breeds more terrorism. This creates more terrorism. When you keep on bombing, bombing and interfering and basically, I mean, seizing other countries, it breeds hatred towards the United States. It's not that complicated. I'm not defending Al Qaeda or ISIS, but there's a reason these people are radicalized. There's a reason they're radicalized and the United States is giving it to them. And I just want to also show you something, you know, the corporate media never has a bond. They call him a crackpot. I don't think he's a crackpot. Ron Paul, Ron Paul said something that makes a lot of sense to me. Assad gassing his own people is total nonsense. Former Congressman Ron Paul has strongly argued following the alleged chemical gas attack blamed on the Syrian government that it makes no logical sense for Assad to order a gas attack and has called the accusations a telltale sign of a false flag attack meant to provide juris justification for the U.S. military to maintain a presence in Syria. Quote, an incident will, will occur and somebody will get will get blamed that it's usually a false flag. Right now, recently, it's all been in Syria. Assad did it. Assad did it, explained the former congressman. No proof at all. No proof at all. So he went on to say, quote, the way the people that perpetuate these false flags say that Assad is gassing his own people, at the same time, he's winning the war and the people are flocking back in to go to the territories that he has returned to the government of Syria, explained Paul. Quote, but nevertheless, he's out there gassing his own people, which makes no sense whatsoever, and fewer and fewer, fewer and fewer people are believing this. Paul, who founded the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity in 2013 after the, leaving the U.S. House, presented his analysis via the Ron Paul Liberty Report, describing how foreign policy goes related to Saudi Arabia and Iran and Russia, as well as the influence of neoconservatives, oil interests, and the military-industrial complex play into the current paradigm we see playing out in Syria. He went on to say, quote, this whole idea that all of a sudden Assad's gassing his own people, I think is total nonsense. Pointing out that over and over again, the U.S. has claimed that the Syrian or Russian government has been complicit in previous gas attacks in Syria and the alleged poisoning of Sergei and Yulia Skripal in London, but quote, nothing panned out, or as Paul put it, one fake news story after another. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know how else to say it, but I think I, when I don't know something, I tend to go with common sense. And as Rania Kalek, a Middle East based journalist who I interviewed, you could listen to that interview. Uh, it's up on the channel here. We did about a half hour interview slash podcast as many other people with brains, Max Blumenthal, Ben Norton, Adam Johnson, Jimmy Dore, has said, why would Assad gas his people now? I mean, he, the, essentially, the Syrian government has retaken like 90% of the country. 
the rebels are basically on their last legs. So I, I'm hoping it's five, a little after five o'clock East Coast. I'm very much hoping that this weekend goes by with no missiles and no bombs and no more bluster. I know CNN wants it. I know MSNBC wants it. Of course, the New York Times wants it, the Washington Post. But we need to keep, we need to break this cycle. It needs to stop. Thank you.